Hey, how's it going dudes and dudettes? Brad the Guitologist here. This is a very old, it, well I say very old, it's 1958 Ico Model 450B uh, capacitor tester. I started a video about this a few years back actually, a couple houses ago. <laughs> And this thing had kind of been packed away in storage uh, ever since, and I sort of forgot about it until uh, tonight. I've decided to whip it out because um, uh, I would like to have it in service uh, for use as a capacitor tester. Uh, and like I said, I just completely forgotten I had it. So I'm going to show you the video clips that I began recording uh, a couple years back, and then we'll catch you up and we'll start wherever we leave off. A long, long time ago. Hello everybody, Brad the Guitologist here with another exciting video for you. This is a, what I believe to be about a night, early 1960s or so, uh, Ico uh, model 950, and I'll show you what it is. It's a vintage capacitor tester. Uh, this is a piece of equipment I've had sitting around for a while that's been in need of uh, service. Uh, I don't think it's been used very much in its lifetime, but uh, it definitely does need a service. It has the original hang tag, also has the original instruction manual, and I think warranty card, yeah. But I'll show you all that stuff a little more closely here in just a bit. I have the schematic. This is a good one to have, considering it has all the paperwork. So let's um, open this thing up. We're going to replace all of the capacitors in this thing. Uh, and once we're done, we can take the capacitors that we've taken out of this thing, and then we can turn around and test them on this thing. Yeah, and as you can see, this thing is full of paper and wax capacitors. Uh, we are going to shotgun all of the capacitors in this thing. Uh, we're going to clean all of the, uh, the controls. I wasn't too far off on my date. October the 1st, 1958 is when this thing was uh, factory tested. And while we're sitting here, I might as well go ahead and pull this tube and clean, clean the socket. Okay, one down. This is the magic eye tube. And these are becoming pretty rare tubes, so the last thing I want to do is break this or have a faulty connection cause it to go bad or something stupid like that. You can see all this gunk on here. See all that stuff. Actually, that's those pins are real nice and clean, so cleaning it was probably redundant but that's uh, better safe than sorry uh, let's go ahead and shotgun these bad boys here and we'll just clip those out I'm not real concerned about this being pretty or anything like that this is a functional machine it's not a beauty contest so I'm gonna leave a little bit of lead here uh, on both ends and I may have to special order some capacitors at the correct values. This is a .25 capacitor. I mean, where the hell am I going to get a .25 capacitor? Okay, we're back with the modern day. I have pulled those two capacitors that we saw in the old clips. Uh, th these were already out. I pulled these uh, at that time. I might have to make this value up because I don't think I have a .2 capacitor that is uh, non-polarized or excuse me I, I mean a, a two microfarad rather um, that's non-polarized I don't have a 0.25 either I'm gonna count on a 0.22 uh, being able to do the job and pass for that value like I said I'll have to make up a two microfarad capacitor at 150 volts yeah so 3.68 s should do the trick and get us close enough yeah you're probably going to notice a pretty big quality difference between the old clips and the new clips at least hopefully i hope i've improved in terms of uh my cinematography and sound and all the rest hopefully okay so i already replaced this one and then this other one came from down here and went okay now i see perfectly well where it went this is usually my preferred way of doing this when combining multiple resistors or capacitors or whatever. I like to wrap the legs 
something like that it gives a good strong connection this should be a pretty good working specimen i mean i did not t even test it i don't think before just deciding to uh, shotgun all the caps you know that caps from 1958 it, and, and this uh, this has been sitting in the box clearly pretty much unused uh, it didn't really make any sense to fire it up without first just just doing the caps I have replaced the two capacitors that needed to be replaced that were up here on top. You could clearly see those in the previous shots. But I have replaced um, the bigger one, the, the two microfarad capacitor, with 3.68 capacitors. So I just paralleled those and it got me pretty much exactly the value I needed. Now I'm on to the capacitors that were down in here. Uh, remove this 0.02. Come on, get in there. Next thing I'm going to have to invest in very seriously is a better chair because this chair was a freebie and it's so loud and it's in every video that I make now and it with this squeaky crap and uh, I'm just kind of sick of it. I'm sure you guys are probably sick of it too hearing the squeaky ass chair. All right. So there's that. I think that's all of them. No, no, no. No, I see some. I'll see a couple bumblebees. We got some bumblebees. Okay, here's the underside of the chassis. We do have an 8 microfarad capacitor here for smoothing. I'm presuming that's what that's for in the power supply. I'll also go, go through and check these resistors because some of these have to be pretty spot on in order for this thing to be calibrated. I'll also read the servicing uh, instructions to make sure that we do get it calibrated, uh, but it looks like I'm going to need an 8 micro track capacitor. I'm going to make that up out of two of these 4.7s. The positive's going to ground, so that's got to be some kind of biasing. I think that's biasing possibly for the uh, for the eye tube. You know, this is a piece of gear that I'm going to be putting into service um, as a piece of test equipment. So I'm not that concerned about what it looks like or resale values or anything like that. Um, we're just trying to get the thing working and working well, hopefully. All right. And like I said, I have to remember to put positive to ground on this connection. Probably going to be easiest to go ahead and clip this one. That's a line capacitor. That's going on the back of the switch. That's switched to ground. I don't know that we really necessarily need that. Um, if we're putting on a three-prong cord, or am I putting on it? I don't think I even need to put on a three-prong cord. This cord's in good shape. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to leave this cord on it. Usually I would do that for safety purposes, but not really necessary. Like I said, I'm not great at reading some of the codes on these capacitors and plus sometimes they're very hard to distinguish uh you know what the what the colors are supposed to be so we'll just go to this it's got a handy schematic here so let's see on the line cord c7 uh c5 6 and 7 are 0.1 microfarad at 400 volts excuse me 0.01 microfarad It's always a bit of a conundrum and a paradox thinking about how you're going to test your uh, capacitors in your capacitor tester <laughs> but that's the way the world is isn't it oh, trying to fix our only broken wrench with our only broken wrench Okay, I think I'm gonna leave that mica capacitor for now. Cause like I say, those uh, those tend to hold up okay. Um, I do have a couple of more, a couple more of these .01s right here. We're gonna replace.
Good lord, come on. Let's try it again. All right, hold it there long enough for me to get the other one on there. So yeah, I think we'll just test it out as it is. See if it fires up. I was trying to look and see if I had a set of plugs I could use for this so I wouldn't have to use gator. I mean, gator clips work w f fine. Uh, you can always clip clip on a gator clip. It's just a little bit nicer if you got the banana, banana plugs. Uh, I'd have to make up a set. I'm gonna dial it up on the very act too just to make sure we don't have any issues. Uh, and also, I think I want to go through the manual and just see how it works because I'm not exactly sure how the power factor Never actually used one of these. I've seen them used before, but it's been a while Should probably go ahead and spray all these controls too. I know they need it Okay, I found something a little bit odd. I was kind of reading over the uh, directions instructions on this thing looking at the schematic too I noticed there what appears to be uh, sort of a voltage doubler circuit right here with a couple of capacitors uh, C9 and a C1 well the C9 and C1 are four microfarad at two uh, one of them is at four microfarad at 250 volts and one is at eight microfarad at 525 volts before I fire this thing up I think we're missing a capacitor we had the eight microfarad um, but what we don't have is the four microfarad at 250 volts. Um, I've got C1. Yeah, that's the one with the positive going to ground. So that one I definitely have. And the other side of it should be going to the transformer, and it is. The other side of the transformer is going to to the rectifier, the 6x5, which i got to put back in there. So remind myself to do that but this four microfarad right here at 250 volts uh this one goes f okay from ground to pin eight is this the four microfarad that that okay so there it is that's a capacitor that's a european capacitor that's why i didn't recognize it so we should replace that too actually that's a fraco west german Four microfarad capacitor. Usually see that stuff like that on uh, European equipment. Okay, yeah, let's fire it up now. I'm gonna dial it up slowly on the Variac and just uh, just give it a second because. I don't, you know, I'm not 100% even sure how to operate this thing yet, so I just want to feel around on it. I don't think I saw a fuse in this thing, did I? Did I see a fuse anywhere? No, there's no fuse. I mean, yeah, we may we may go back and fuse this. Probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. Okay, we got glow on the magic eye. Okay, so we know there's no shorts or anything. We're doing good on the voltages and all that. Okay, so that right there, when it gets to the widest point on the magic eye, I don't know if you can see it real well. Okay, you see I turn this and that gap closes. So when I turn it to the point where it's the widest, that's telling me uh, my reading for capacitance. You also have to set the range down here to the appropriate range. This is supposed to be an 8 microfarad capacitor, and I have it set to the 0.1 microfarad to 50 microfarad range. If it was bigger than 50 microfarad, I'd have to change the range. But I'm trying to figure out how to read this freaking dial, because I don't know the first thing about it, to be honest. Let's see what the instructions have to say about it. 
Okay, so this is how you do the leakage tests on this. I just figured it out. If you go um, on the range down here, if you go to electrolytic test, uh, you can then test the capacitor at different voltages to check for leakage. Uh, if you look here, you can see that this is pretty wide on the magic eye. Uh, and if as I start to turn the voltage up, you'll see it's will go up to maybe like 100 volts and this should expand back out and it shouldn't take very long to do it and bigger capacitors probably will take a little bit longer but um, you know you, you should be able to run this up to add or close to its operating voltage without this being excessively leaky and it looks like this one is this one is staying pretty pretty tight it's not really opening back up there's 375 volts right there barely opening up at all now so it's coming back a little bit it's recovering let's go to 450 it is staying open that's surprisingly I think that might actually be a good capacitor see I could go to comparator I believe I could go to comparator and put another capacitor in on this side that was the same value and I think it compares the two somehow. Okay, so let's le read a little bit of the circuit description here. So the operation of the of this unit can be best understood by examining the circuit formed at each position of the range switch. And indeed, the range switch on the unit, you know, it's obviously putting us into different modes of operation. Um, and the, the overall schematic of the unit can look a bit confusing until you realize that you know this th this just eliminate the switching and then it's not quite as confusing so that's what they've kind of done in this manual they've eliminated the switching on some schematics so that you can more easily see what exactly is going on uh, in each position so let's read through this for just a second in, in each of the bridge circuits p1 varies the resistance in two arms so let's look at the two arms and let's look at what p1 is so right here p1 this is potentiometer number one this is the big potentiometer that's in the center of the unit this big thing right here okay so that varies that actually forms a looks like a voltage divider right here uh in both of these circuits so there's a circuit uh here that's going through this R10 and the C5 in this case and over here so this is this is a circuit and there's also another circuit over here and in this case your capacitor under test will be hooked in on this side so you're hooking in a capacitor over here and then you've got another capacitor uh, over here and essentially those two things are being compared uh, through this voltage divider right here which is P1 okay same thing is happening over here you got a voltage divider so you're adding or subtracting voltage and getting a balance um, between the two sides so in this case you're on a, a different range so for figure one uh, that's this one uh, this is the bridge circuit for the really small capacitors small values uh, and then you get up to figure two, which is the bridge circuit for the 0.1 microfarad through the 50 microfarad range. P2 uh, is required to balance the internal series resistance frequency pres present in electrolytic capacitors and is calibrated in percent power factor. So they add this, which is the power factor um, potentiometer over here. They add that so that you can more accurately start to uh, uh, test electrolytic capacitors. So, but again, you basically have just two, uh, two circuits, this circuit over on this side and a circuit over on this side. And again, here's where you're, here's the capacitor under test, all right? And this circuit is basically comparing the two and using this potentiometer in the center as a voltage divider. Down here you have uh, a coil. This is the secondary coil, which is the 54 volts off of the transformer that's supplying the power to the circuit. 
uh, and this is a limiting resistor. Uh, it and actually does a good job of explaining the circuit here. Um, so I, I have to give props to whoever wrote this manual did a pretty good job. I thought at first that it was you know pretty impenetrable because I was kind of reading through it hoping for because we're so used to now having like a a quick guide here's your quick guide or here's your quick setup but no this is something that if you really want to understand the unit you should read through this and try to understand the damn unit so this is the days when people actually wanted to understand their equipment uh built their own equipment in a lot of cases uh, in the case of um you know a lot of kit testing equipment uh which i'm not sure i don't think i don't know if ico sold kits i think they sold some kits but i'm not really sure i know Heath, you know obviously heath kit did and you could get similar items through heath kit that you could build yourself and i think ico you you could do that too but i'm not quite sure so anyway here it talks about uh, the b plus voltage requiring the power to uh, required to power the electron ray indicator and the negative DC voltage required for leakage testing of capacitors are obtained from uh, the 6x5 tube connected as a halfway re rectifier um, in conjunction with the high voltage secondary winding of the power transformer and the filter and voltage divider networks composed of R8, R7, P3, C1, and C9. Uh, here's C1 and C9. You can see that's kind of a, this is a voltage uh, doubling circuit. And the difference between this point and this point is going to be, uh, what, about over 500 volts, but, uh, potentially. But anyway, that kind of talk, that talks about how you get power to the tube itself, but it kind of ignores the powering of the tube um, after this. And this is the only thing that really requires this kind of power. Everything else is... Uh, run off of this 54 volt winding right here so you have uh, this main secondary which is the the high voltage then you have a medium voltage a 54 volt and then you have down here um, where they get their 6.3 uh, filaments this one is interesting though figure six this is the uh, bridge circuit for the comparator range what this allows you to do is hook up a capacitor over on this side that is your known good capacitor then you hook up your uh, your unknown capacitor on this side and you're going to compare the two and basically you want to see how far out of tolerance is one from the other so if you know that this is your ideal and it's dead on what you want and dead on what you need let's say it's a 0.1 microfarad capacitor uh, you're going to build a hundred of these items and uh, they're, they have to be exactly the same or within a certain tolerance of being the same. Uh, you want to make sure that whatever you put over here matches over here. That's what this circuit is for in figure six. If you take a look at this figure, you can see the same thing is happening uh, as was happening above. You're really comparing two different circuits here uh, through this voltage divider. Okay, but in this case, you have a capacitor over here and a capacitor over here and you're you're getting things to match and you know for this to work properly you need to make sure that uh, that this is is calibrated to the center put your little indicator your arrow indicator where it's it's dead up straight in the center uh, a couple more things we'll look at is are these last two figures down here figure seven and figure eight the leakage check circuit for this paper mica test Okay, R9 slows down the charging process so that the electron ray tube action will not be too fast for detection of the operator. So if we're comparing these two, you'll see what R9 is, where R9 is in the circuit. R9 is right here, and here's the capacitor you're measuring across here. And what this is doing is when uh, your eye tube is opening back up as you're increasing voltages, um, sometimes it'll open too slowly or too fast. It'll just be right immediately open. You want to see how fast it's opening because if it's opening really, really slowly, uh, you know that that capacitor is struggling to keep up with that uh, under that voltage load. Uh, and this kind of solves that. And for figure eight, it says uh, the leakage check circuit in the electrolytic test position. Note that R11, the 2.2K, provides reduced electron ray tube sensitivity as compared to the circuit of figure seven. So when you switch to uh, this test, this resistor changes and this resistor disappears. You have your voltage 
coming in here and your P3, which is your voltage controller, controls the amount of voltage that gets over to this point. This is your voltage supply in both of these. So it'll come to here. And of course, this this is the eye tube so that this is how the, it controls the, uh, the opening of the eye. That's just basically how, how these circuits are working. And, it, and it's a, you know, it's a lot less confusing to look at those than it is to look at you know the entire thing with the with all the switching involved as well because this is different layers or different stacks in each of these switches really good instruction manual it's nice to have with it uh, also another thing that i did not realize i mean i kind of guess I, I did realize it but it just kind of glossed over it earlier is that this thing will actually <coughs> test uh, resistance as well it's a resistance capacitance tester and and if you go to the resistance range you, know, you can re you can test resistances from a half an ohm all the way up to uh, 500 megs so you pretty much any resistor you need to test you could test on this thing as well so a uh, really nice piece of equipment it would have been really useful to have on a workbench back in the day um, and probably one of the only pieces of equipment you might have needed is in terms of testing uh, resistors and capacitors. These bumblebees, I don't think any of these are any good because check this out. Well, the first one doesn't really give me a capacitor reading at all. I can't find I can't find a value anywhere on the scale. I think this is a false reading down in here. It's giving me something, but I think that's a false reading. I've had that with a couple of uh, other capacitors now. So I think that's that's just a I don't know some kind of glitch or something going on there. Um, but if I go to the paper mica test, the leakage test, uh, it's opening up now. It wasn't opening up at all before. It's like zero. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Oh, but look at that. It's it's leaky at 50 volts. See that? just entirely leaky if you if you look at the eye like see it's not leaky right there but when it's full like that that's leaky and you can kind of see the green is even crossing over on itself and becoming twice as green right down there now it's just an, it's just completely leaky that's no good that capacitor let's check this next one okay that's dialed up to 10 volts <laughs> and that's about 20 maybe volts and it's already that's that's so leaky it's not even funny I'm I, actually let me see if I can find the capacitance measurement on this because it's supposed to be <clears throat> point, point zero 0.01 so this is the appropriate range and I should pick it up it's trying to read it right in here but it's just not a good capacitor. It's not a good capacitor. It's not even. It's not even really behaving as a capacitor. It's behaving more as a. Uh, almost more as a resistor. All right, this one you can kind of see it's trying. It's trying to pick it up too, but it's just not. Yeah, it's just not there. Nobody's home. So no real capacitor value. This. Let's do the uh, leakage test, and just like the other two, it's I mean just leaky as a sieve. So uh, yeah, these are just really bad capacitors. These bumblebees, man, they're terrible. But the, I mean, they might work, might work in a um, tone circuit or something. So I, I usually keep those. I mean, don't really ask. Don't ask me why. It's just force a habit I see so many people selling those for um, stupid prices sometimes it's just like what that's a piece of crap but so it makes it harder for me to throw them away I do have a bunch of old capacitors here let's let's check out a couple things check out one of these molded 0.1 capacitors this is like something you'll see, you'd see in a fender Let's do the leakage test on it. Let's 
doing okay so far. The voltage rating is 400 volts. There we are at 200. It's doing well. Three, doing well at three, 350. There's its rated voltage, 400. It's wide open. So we're good there. And it's a, what I say, a 0.1. So let's, let's go there. And pick it up down here. Yep, right on point one, dead on it. That's a damn good capacitor. Yeah, these molded capacitors, these usually do pretty well. Uh, here's a vintage brown turd capacitor like you find in <clears throat> a lot of Gibson amps and also you find them in uh, like Dan Electro's, I think, sometimes. Uh, and again, this is also a point one, so it should Yep, it's dead on right there. Same value as the last one we just tested. Let's go to the paper mica test and see for the leakage. And this one is rated at 600 volts. Doing good. Oh, look at that. It's opening wide back up. All the way up to 500 volts. This one goes, this one stops at 500. It's trying to become a little bit leaky at 500, but that's a good that's a good capacitor, and I was right for keeping it. It's a pull from something. I think I recapped a. Uh, I just did a total recap on something once. Okay, so here's another one of these. Uh, did I say Freud earlier? It's Eroid from West Germany. This is a. This one's like paper and epoxy or something like that. Should go up to 400 volts DC. Ooh, not too promising. You saw how slowly that recovered. See, it is recovering, but it's recovering slowly, and it's getting leakier and leakier. And it's totally leaky at about 150 volts. So this, uh, yeah, this this capacitor is really not a good capacitor. Here's a standard capacitor. This is something you would find in old Dan Electros and things like that a lot. Some organs had these. Well, a lot of equipment had these capacitors. Let's try a leakage test on it. 600 volt capacitor, this one. It wouldn't surprise me if this one was pretty good because it's uh, sealed on both ends. Usually when they're really nice and sealed, the moisture doesn't get to them and they don't deteriorate and that's exactly what's happened with this one no moisture no deterioration let's go measure and it's measuring dead on dead on that's a good capacitor man that thing is probably from the 1950s good good capacitor um, and here let's try this again let's just try bumblebee Another bumblebee of a higher value. I mean, it's barely even opening to indicate it's a capacitor at all. No, oh, there we go. I found it. The value just drifted upward. So the values drifted upward just a little bit. It's not. No, it's not bad. It's not too bad. But if we go over to the leakage test, I bet it's going to be leaky as a sieve. See how slow it's recovering? It's kind of doing like that German one was doing. It's recovering, but it's recovering slowly. I don't know what these are rated at. Maybe 200 volts. Leaky at 250 volts. Uh, what else do we have in here? We've got a got a lot of different a lot of different stuff. We've got a was it this one's Jap Japanese? Let's ch check out an old Japanese. I think it's from the 60s, maybe early 70s. Uh, Nichicon. Nichicon are good uh, good capacitors usually. So 0.1 microfarad at 600 volts. Let's check it for leakage first. You see how fast it's recovering? That's telling me it's probably going to do all right all the way up the dial or close to it. 
Almost. Almost. It's getting somewhat leaky up uh, near the top of the range, but that's not too bad. It's closer to the American, the nicer American stuff, uh, the molded caps and the standard cap, than it is that uh, crappy Sprague. But let's test it for uh, value. Okay. Our value is pretty pretty dead on right there at one uh, one microfarad where it should be or point one excuse me microfarads where it should be. I'll do one more here. There's just out of curiosity. Here's another. Okay, so this is a West German cap as well. This is an Eero. There you go. Let's say Eero. So this is a point one microfarad at 250 volts DC. We'll see if somebody's home here. Yeah, we got something. At least it's still a cap. So it's a little bit above, but not bad. Let's go to the leakage test. Yeah, this thing is going to be... That's eh, not doing too bad. We've seen worse, but it's recovering slowly. And we're getting close to the top of its rating. Yeah, it's leaky at 200 volts. It's rated at 250 volts, so uh, not a particularly good cap. It would work in some applications, though. So, you know, caps like that you keep around just, I don't, I don't know, maybe on a tone circuit at some point it'll go in something. Who knows? It does. It would work fine for that application. So it's not total garbage. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. TRW 600. I don't know what that means. 630. 0.1 microfarads at 400 volts. So let's try this guy. Uh, let's do, go and do the leakage test first. Oh, you can see how fast that's recovering. This is going to be a good one. Almost like it reminds me of these molded capacitors. The way it's constructed, and in fact, I would probably venture to guess it is probably made by the same company, USA made. What? Well, who made those? Mica mold. Yeah, this is a good cap. This is going to be a good cap all the way up the dial. It's starting to leak a little bit up at the top, but you expect that. Um, Yeah, and we're pretty much dead on. We're dead on the value. That's a good cap, like new. And you can see it's got the full length of the lead, so it is. it probably has never been used. But yeah, it's just interesting to me, um, seeing how different caps hold up. Here's a, pyr here's a pyramid. Pyramid BTS, uh, 200 volts. 0.1 microfarad. That's a 20%. I bet this one. I bet this one ain't gonna be worth a shit. Something tells me. Yeah, I don't have high hopes for this one being good on the leakage test. When I say 200 volts, yeah, it's not. We're already leaking at 150 volts. So yeah, I think now that I've got the I've got the hang of using this thing, that's probably the only two settings I would use it on, most likely. Uh, there may come a time when I would want to try comparing different caps. Maybe if I'm trying to uh, uh, find a couple of caps, you know, to, to balance an output or something uh, on the coupling or whatever. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I could do that and compare the two caps, but so really cool. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, hit subscribe down below. And for now, we'll see y'all later. <laughs>